How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. So finally we have a PCI Express 4 on Intel systems and because of that we thought we'd take a look at one of the fastest PCI Express 4 NVMe SSDs that you can get on the market right now and that is the Aorus Gen 4 7000S SSD and this thing is hella quick. Now you did actually get a other one, a PCI Express a card from Aorus as well which is like 15,000 uh, 15, megabytes a second, but that was super expensive and was also uh, uh, more of a card, whereas these ones are now an M.2 style of format. And again, just like the name implies, it pretty much goes up to 7,000 megabytes a second in reads and around 5,500 megabytes a second uh, in, in writes. But now of course, all of that doesn't come without a price, although these ones aren't actually that expensive for everything that you get. So the one terabyte model that we have here is retailing for around $210 and for the two terabyte model that's going for around 390. Uh, unfortunately here in South Africa we don't have any pricing as of yet but if it's available we'll just leave a link down in the description below. But now again like I said for the price point and everything you get is actually not that bad especially because you also get a very nice uh, heat aspirator as well that does do quite a good job and usually you have to pay extra for that or you have to use your motherboard's uh, integrated PCI Express or M.2 heat spreader and sometimes they don't really have them so you do have a better cooling for here especially for that uh, speeds. So with uh, that let's quick go over uh, the design of uh, the 7000S. So you do get a, this a very nice a bulky looking heat spreader in uh, the uh, more uh, gray and a uh, black color scheme which I do actually like quite a bit. Now the heat spreader is quite a bit uh, thick as uh, well. Uh, they did state that it's around 7 millimeters thick on their website uh, but from what we measured it's around 11 millimeters so one centimeter around there um, and that could be a problem depending on your GPU if you want to mount it underneath your GPU so um, it might stand out a bit too much and it cause you to not really be able to install your your graphics card so maybe more at the bottom or at the top of your GPU it's going to be the best a bit for that but again that's going to depend up to your GPU and also your motherboard so just take a look at that before getting this one but the heat sinks purpose is to cool down the CPU and is designed with a more a passive cooling to maximize a surface area for the heat dissipation with an advanced thermal technology and a nano carbon coating uh, and it does help to keep it nice and cool as it also has a high conductivity thermal pads on both sides to help keep it even lower we have actually seen that more on some of the uh, more recent SSDs so that is very nice now compared to some of the other SSDs on the market they do state it that it does have improved uh, thermals a, dis a thermal dissipation that extends up to around a 46 percent more compared to some of the other ones for a longer uh, intensive runs which i can definitely uh, think because uh, these pc express are for uh, ssds uh, do get quite a bit hot but again like we'll see now it isn't really a problem for uh, this one now, if you wanted to, you can probably remove the heat spreader and then uh, install it like underneath your motherboard's heat spreader if you really wanted to, or maybe inside a laptop. We are seeing that uh, laptops are supporting uh, more PCI Express 4 NVMe SSDs now, so that might be an option. But of course, you are going to get a lot higher attempts with that. As for this one, for our extremely uh, more intensive uh, test, we did actually see it uh, max out at 75 degrees Celsius, which isn't actually uh, too bad for, again, a very demanding stress test. So it wasn't that bad, actually. And that was also inside our open uh, test bench, which didn't have any extra air blowing over the, the components. So that will also help reduce the temperatures quite a bit. But now if you do install it and uh, you want to remove it, just give it some time to cool down because it does get extremely hot. The SSD on its own doesn't necessarily get that hot, uh, but the heat spreader does. And uh, while we were testing it, we were actually thinking that if you do 
touch it and trying to remove it, you'll actually get like a blister because it gets at that hot. So does a good a job. Just don't touch it right after a heavy uh, thermal test. As for the specs of the SSD, if you guys need that, uh, it is using the second generation PCI Express 4 controller, allowing you to get at that high speed, 7,000 megabytes a second. And the controller is the PS5018EA18, and it does use a 3D TLC and NAND flash. So you're pretty much getting everything at the top of the range there uh, on the uh, 12 nanometer process. Also, it does support up to eight NAND flash channels with a 32 CE. Uh, it has a DDR4 SLC caching and it does a meet NVMe 1.4. But now with all of that out of the way, how does the 7000S actually perform? So just quickly for our benchmarking system, we did use the brand new i9-11900K, which was overclocked uh, on the AORS Z590 Master motherboard and 32 gigs of DDR4 memory running at 4000 megahertz. So for our sequential test, we did see speeds just slightly above the claim speeds from AORS themselves. And because of that, it was uh, the uh, fastest uh, SSD that we have uh, tested uh, so far by quite a large margin, uh, beating out everything uh, else, even uh, the first generation uh, PCI Express 4 NVMe SSDs. Now, when it came uh, to a random uh, tests, we usually see that this is where a lot of them uh, do uh, drop down quite a bit. And uh, the 7000S did also drop a bit, but it still held its gap between the other SSDs by quite a bit. The only other SSD that came across was actually the first generation or a PCI Express 4 SSD, which in my system are right there, which we're using. So it does seem that the Aorus knows how to handle more of the random speed test for their SSDs. But of all of the gamers out there, you probably want to know how fast the SSD can copy over all of your game files and so on. So for that, we did use a 38 gig Steam backup and also a 113 gig Steam backup and copy it from the SSD to another SSD back again and then also made a duplicate on the 7000S as well. So testing all of the combinations in read, write and read and write. <laughs> so firstly, the 38 gig file to copy to the 7000S took around 20 seconds. Then copying from it to the other SSD took 49 seconds because the other one is slower, of course. And then for the duplicate test, that only took 18 seconds. 18 seconds to copy over 38 gigs. But now what about the 113 gigs? Well, that only took 65 seconds to copy to the 7000S, 108 seconds copying to the other SSD from the 7000S, again, towards the slower SSD, and to make a duplicate on the same drive, that only took 63 seconds. 60 seconds, less than 60 seconds to copy over 100 gigs on the same drive. That is just mind-blowingly quick. So that, that's just awesome, really. We did also test the PCI Mark 10 SSD benchmark, where the 7000S scored a 4,208 compared to the previous uh, top of the gun, a Sabrin Rocket PCI Express 4 SSD, which only scored around a 30, uh, 3,981. So beating that one as well. So then with the new second generation of PCI Express 4 MDME SSDs, the performance is quite a big jump, almost a double as much. But now where will they actually use that extra speed? Because it's not going to be useful currently for gaming. So for us, we're mostly going to use it for our editing systems to copy over raw project files for, for editing at higher bit rates, or if you just have a lot of data that you need to copy as quick as possible. So that is the, currently the only place that I can actually see the 7000S coming into play. But now there is one possible advantage that you could get by getting one of these for gaming, and that is coming from Intel with their direct storage technology. Now, it's not out yet, but from everything that we've seen, 
it could actually uh, utilize uh, the speeds of faster SSDs to improve your uh, gameplay, possibly increase your uh, frame rates, or just help load games faster and load uh, textures uh, faster to, again, possibly increase uh, per, uh, your frame rates or just load a lot of the textures uh, faster so you don't need to wait for the the background to load or the the, the objects in the distance for like a uh, skyrim or so on to to load so that's possibly where we could see uh, the uh, extra speeds from these ssds really come into play but again it's not out yet so we'll have to actually just wait and see now another possibility for these uh, faster ssds and that's something that's been going around apparently is that they've been using faster ssds to mine cryptocurrencies on now i'm all in for cryptocurrencies and so on but now utilizing ssds to mine it as well this could be a bit of a problem because we already heard that a lot of the uh, storage is being bought in, in bought over in China, so there's going possibly going to be a, a, a scarcity of SS fast SSDs as well. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a possibility. So we'll just have to wait and see. So maybe rather get a faster SSDs quicker than later because you might be disappointed especially because we have seen the prices of gpus just skyrocket double what it actually should be so um, yeah we'll, we'll have to wait and see really but now that's pretty much it uh, for my look at the aorus uh, 7000s ssd again just by far the fastest ssd that we have tested on the channel so far and probably one of the fastest on the market again they had that what 15,000 megabytes a second pizza express or uh, pizza express card but that one costs more than like a system on its own so uh definitely not worth it but this one actually is pricing is a pretty good a speed is really good and uh, temperatures is also good with the nice large heat spreader and again looking at all the advantages that's coming possibly in the future with direct storage and so on uh, it could actually be a good option to go for some of these second generation PCI Express 4 uh, SSDs to utilize at that speed for a gaming or even if you're more into productivity like we are utilizing that speed to load all of your projects faster uh, or the footage faster that is going to be a quite useful so yeah faster speeds just all the way so with all of that a big thanks to aoro south africa for sending over the 7000 as a four hour review and also to utilize it here in the studio creating a more videos big shout out to them if you guys want to get it for yourself i will leave links in the video description hopefully it's going to be available here in south africa quite as soon but We'll link it down there. If you guys enjoyed this review, please like, share, subscribe, and comment like always. And I will check all of you next time. Cheers, guys.